Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have some updates actually coming out about Katla. And there's a lot of talk about, is this volcano going to erupt? Now, those of you that don't know is there's been a lot of talk on the eruption and the seismic activity that's been going on there. Uh, and Katla, as you can see here on Wikipedia, uh, they have his volcanic explosivity index or VEI. And they're saying that Katla lies between four and a five on a scale of zero to eight. And they're saying that is very similar to Mount St. Helens eruption. And if we take a look or think back about, you know, how all these planes stopped in 2010 because of the eruption at Eiffel Yokut, hopefully I said that all right, uh, back in 2010, um, that had a VEI of four. So it wasn't as powerful as Katla will be when it erupts because it's definitely a history of this erupting. If you go on Wikipedia, you can see a list of the eruptions that are kind of known, and it goes back to 2920 BCE and uh, and goes up. So there is a lot of talk. This is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Now, the Icelandic Meteorological uh, Agency has said that mi as of mid-June, earthquake activity within the cladra of the ice-covered Katla volcano has increased above regular levels and more that more than 100 shallow earthquakes have been detected since the 1st of june in 2016 which is almost four times the monthly average compared to the previous years now they're saying that earthquakes occurred mainly in bursts ranging from minutes to hours often within 20 uh, event clusters or more and that uh, the two largest earthquakes since the beginning of this unrest occurred july 26th this year at 3.42 in the morning, and then another one at 3.50. Both of them had a magnitude of around 3.2, or the same 3.2. Now, there is summertime increases in seismic activity, and that's very common in Katla, and the ongoing activity there is similar to the summertime stuff that they see back in 2012 and 2014, and often this increased uh, seismic activity is in association with drainage of the meltwater and and other things like that uh, obviously because of the summer and hydrothermal activity as observed almost annually as they said now since late june 2016 there have been three small floods uh, in one of the rivers an outlet um, from mir Dovsjokut, and then there's also been a flood from the enteryokut glacier now presently water levels and electrical connectivity measurements at the bridge over Mjölvirzi, butchering these names, I know, show increased drain, drainage of geothermal meltwater uh, from Mjölvirzjökull, which is the ice cap that is covering Katla. Uh, now, this is again below a glacier. I'm going to go over some graphs real quick as I've sort of finished talking about this. Um, now, they have noticed and received several reports throughout the summer of a hydrogen sulfide stench from the glacial rivers around here. Now, around Katla, they're not detecting signs of increased ground deformation or, or you know, tons of seismic tremor, which are both signals, as we know from the other eruptions, that something might be going underneath and some movement of magna. But they are very closely monitoring this because this is a very powerful volcano that, uh, you know, if it erupts, it's a, it's a very big deal. Um, now, the assessment they have is that the volcano is in a period of summertime unrest and is not immediate, uh, showing immediate signs of eruption, although they cannot rule out a sudden escalation in seismic activity uh, in connection with this flooding. What I want to show you here on this graph is actually a lot of the data that they have, and I'll scroll to the bottom so you can see, it's from January 2011. And we go all the way up to January of 2023. Starting from the top, we can see there's the earthquake rate. And what we want to look at is this red line. And that's sort of the, the addition, the, the total number of earthquakes as it builds. We see that between 2016 and, you know, basically 2017, there was quite a jump. And it's not this even flow there was a jump at the beginning and we see another jump here in sort of the middle 2016 and it's steadily going up it does make sense that this line is going up because you know with each earthquake the line goes higher and higher but to see these drastic rises up 
show that there's increased seismic activity and earthquakes going on in these periods. Uh, and we can see based on the curvature of the second half versus the first, it seems to be going up and having more frequent earthquakes based on this information. If we, however, look into the middle one, which is the magnitude, we see that generally, with the exception of these few ones towards the very end here, uh, generally it looks pretty even, where you get this period of high frequency and high magnitude, and then it dies back down, and then it goes back up and down and up and down. You know, So we're seeing this. But again, we're seeing new heights over in 2023. So that's the latest data that they have. Going down to the bottom one, um, we are now looking at the seismic movement overall. And we can see again, in conjunction with this sort of uprising, uh, we see a big lift in the cumulative seismic movement uh, between 2016 and 2018. But when we look at January 2023 and later, specifically just these couple months that we're looking at, um, it is a very huge spike going up. What this means, again, everyone is doing guesswork right now. It could erupt tomorrow, could erupt today. Um, usually they have a little bit more warning. Uh, but this is the data that's coming out. This is the raw facts that they have on Katla and the potential eruption. And, uh, or I guess you know, the eruption that will happen if we, again, take a look at all the eruptions. This is an active volcano. It is not dormant. It will erupt again at some point. Uh, but we're looking at, you know, 40 years in between. We see 1860, 1918, 1955, 1999. Um, but they're saying that these ones here in 1999 and 1955, these are unknown. And so they're not really sure if something happened. Uh, and the concerning part of that is we can see previous to that, to these ones that are, are known, that it's 1823 and then 1860, so it's you know 30 whatever years, and then we go to 1918. If these ones here didn't happen, then we are looking at something that, based on the historical data, is overdue. And we can see that roughly every 100 years uh, or less, it's erupting. What this means is hopefully these ones up here actually happened and we buy ourselves a little bit more time. But if not, then we are looking at potentially a major eruption coming out of Katla in, uh, who knows, any day now. So just wanted to bring this up. I know there's a lot of talk about the eruptions coming up. There's talk about the eruptions that just ended and what's next. Uh, we have Askia as well. So there's other other areas of Iceland that are sort of being talked about as the next eruption place. Uh, and a lot of those places are a little bit more difficult to get to. Uh, another one here is behind Vatnajökull uh, Park, sort of in this in this top area here. But we can see this is the map of Iceland. This red triangle is Katla, and if you have been here to Iceland before, we can see right below here is Vík, which is a very popular tourist destination. So if it erupts, it will definitely, um, yeah, it will not be good for tourism in that regard because this one is a big one. So just wanted to give you a quick update on that. Katla volcano, uh, they're saying no immediate danger. But again, looking at the data, and I'll put a link to this chart so that you can all take a look. Let me know what it means to you if you are more of an expert in this than I am, because I'm far from it. Uh, take a look at this information and let me know in the comments what does this signify, because we're just looking at raw data. And uh, to me, these big spikes coming out of this year and this incline of earthquakes and higher magnitude, um, that's all kind of pointing something uh, towards a volcano that's getting ready to erupt. So that's it. It's a bunch of information. This video is a little bit longer than I had you know, thought it was going to be, but I wanted to give you all the most up-to-date information that we have for you to take a look. So until next time, thank you so much for watching.